Chasing chickens is all in a school day's work for these Year 7 students. And it's just one experience offered as part of the school's unique agricultural studies program. Where geography Year 9 would talk about the beef industry in Australia, we actually run a beef small enterprise here. Where they talk about um, climates and weather, this school farm is affected very much by climate and weather. And Already known for producing schoolyard wine, Mount View High is also running its small-scale farm as a business operation, trying to survive in a competitive market. Come on, Blinda. Don't kiss it. Get it out of there. For example, the cashmere goats with, at the moment are, are low priority with cashmere prices very low. Prime lamb is a good uh, goer at the moment and uh, accordingly we've expanded our herd, our small flock of, of sheep. And, to maximise our returns from the high price of prime lamb. And there's a few surprises for students who've had little, if any, experience handling animals. Here it's compulsory, you've got to handle animals and, and if you don't like it, you've got to do it. And that's great because a lot of kids, if they're forced into it, they can handle, they can handle it and they overcome these fears. Melinda Smith, NBN News. Brigades were called to a flat in the Newcastle suburb of Cooks Hill in September last year, but this was no ordinary fire. Inside, a birthday celebration had turned into a bloodbath. We heard an explosion uh, and I ran out and I saw smoke. I went and dragged him out and then I seen the woman and I dragged her out too. Pavel Gomba shot 54-year-old Annika Kulevska twice as she sat at his kitchen table. Her boyfriend, Alexander Radozavlevic, was shot twice. Gomba then set fire to the bedroom and turned the gun on himself. Alexander managed to escape, raising the alarm at a doctor's surgery around the corner. Pavel Gombar appeared in Newcastle Supreme Court today. He pleaded guilty to manslaughter and malicious wounding on the grounds of diminished responsibility. Gombar had previously won lotto. He told police the shooting was over money. Pavel Gombar told police he believed Annika had stolen $24,000 cash he'd hidden in a thermos in his wardrobe. He was sort of offended because uh, the other party uh, stole his uh, money. Gomba will be sentenced later this month. Jane Anderson, NBN News. Minor Premier's Newcastle had the worst possible start. The SG ball is named after a South stalwart and the team played like it wanted the family treasure back. But the Knights opened the score with the outstretched hand of David Greenup. A charge to the corner got South Swithin two. Try scorer Ben Decker set up the second, South going into the break 10-6 up. A clever pass gave South the perfect start to the second half. A penalty goal got the Knights within eight points, the step of Owen Craigie closing the gap to two. A perfectly placed cross kick gave the lead back to the Knights. Newcastle had the game wrapped up with just a minute to go, then the dream was shattered. The kick made it 22-20, South celebrating soccer style, the Knights devastated. Richard O'Leary... NBN News.
Conserve and recycle was the message for visitors at Tari's Enviro Fair. People of all ages inspected solar energy and environmental group displays. Alternative health, waste management and soil erosion. Topics of discussion all available in pamphlet form. Apart from information stalls, a range of items were on sale. Crafts, jewellery, massages, even worms. Things that you can use in your own house, in your own backyard, virtually. Seeds, plants, flowers, all grown uh, without chemicals and pesticides. So there's a real environmental um, issue here today. Joanne Wallace claims this year's EnviroFair has been one of the most successful. 25 more displays have been added to the list. Tracy Walsh, NBN News. Grafton teams have dominated play at the Tari Indoor Cricket Centre this weekend. The A-grade men set the standard early yesterday and the women's teams maintain their position. Today Grafton came up against Kempsey. Following the sixth round, winning North Coast teams will play New England champions in the grand finals on the 20th of August. Last year Tari cleaned up with four grades victorious. Meanwhile, Australian representative player Louise Clark from Kempsey will be part of the North Coast team contesting the Tasman Cup State League in Sydney next weekend. Six Tyree women will be included in the team to take on cricketers from centres all over the state. Tracy Walsh, NBN News. He's 14 years old and is the leading junior in Pakistan. More still, Kashif Hussain, right of screen, is rated ninth best in his country's senior ranks and is being touted as the successor to Jansa Khan. The squash dynamo is playing several tournaments in Australia in preparation for the world junior titles in New Zealand next month. Providing strong competition for the visitor was Grafton's Nathan Elder, who's ranked fourth in the state under-19 division. In the girls' under-17 top seed carries Heidi Mather in the white, advanced into the semi-finals after easily winning her match against Justine Hughes from Sydney. Players are eager to perform well at this competition as it's the final one before the state titles in Sydney next month. At Lake Macquarie, the competition was just as fierce. The Lakeside Gymnastics Invitational saw state, national and potential champs on display. One young lady commanding spectators' attention was Anya Lamb. The 16-year-old already has an Australian title under her belt and today proved superior in the vaulting section. Catherine Lamond, NBN News. It's been years in the planning and taken countless months to prepare, but Newcastle, Australia is ready to hit the high seas. It's very, very much a community effort. I don't own the boat. Um, we have a, a very large support group of people, over 80 companies inv invested in us. Newcastle's Lady Mayoress Margaret McNaughton officially started the yacht's career as a around-the-world racer. Two youngsters will miss their dad, but Alan's wife is confident he'll be safe. I worry more about him driving around town here than I do out at sea. The yacht will take the city's name to the world's media beginning this weekend when she sails to New Zealand en route for the start of the BOC Challenge in South Carolina in September. The race will take about nine months to complete with a stopover in Sydney at Christmas. 30 individual races are taking part, including one woman from France. Three of the yachts are from Australia. Peter Ryan, NBN News.
The derelict building at Cardiff and surrounding land is on the target of Lake Macquarie Council and Mayor John Kilpatrick is one of the most outspoken on the issue. He wants the property badly. We have identified the need for a uh, quality athletics facility which uh, the Hunter region badly lacks and we're endeavouring to get that in the Glendale area, hopefully on the land that the State Rail Authority currently own. Council has been lobbying for the past few months to get the money to buy a parcel of the Cardiff site from the State Rail Authority. We've been talking to the State Members of Parliament and what they have agreed to do is to uh, pool some of their sport and recreation grants towards regional facilities. And according to Councillor Kilpatrick, there are more plans in the pipeline for the land, apart from the athletics track proposal to go before Council tonight. The other area, of course, is the uh, Cardiff Workshops building itself, which is some five acres under cover. Uh, and uh, we are hopeful that, that will stay in public ownership because ultimately uh, it would make a marvellous sporting uh, centre, really. You could put basketball stadiums, badminton, all sorts of indoor sporting facilities in it. Right from the start in Newcastle's Hunter Street Mall, the 21 entrants in the Variety Club bash were in party mode. Batman, the Bishop and the Bub ready for a good time. It's not a race, it's not a rally, it's not serious and people enjoy themselves. Yep. The plan is to travel to Golgong, Cooler, Gunnedah, Walker, Foster and then back to Newcastle. All the vehicles are pre-1966, mainly old Holdens. One entrant thought he'd make the trip an educational tour with an old school bus. Headmaster and students supplied. Newcastle's Lord Mayor, Councillor John McNaughton, got them away. The Variety Club is hoping the event will raise up to $60,000 for disabled or underprivileged children across the region. All entrants are expected back in Newcastle on Friday, but then again, anything could happen. Peter Ryan, NBN News. It's a real problem for the city. Graffiti artists are facing buildings, fences, billboards, anything they can aim their spray cans at. This is more the look Newcastle Council is after. The plan announced by General Manager Bill Grant at a businessman's lunch today to get the graffitiists creating art for the city. Some people like graffiti. They attract certain uh, markets. While it's not a new idea and certainly not the complete answer, Council believes it's a step in the right direction. Special buildings will be designated for a new look. There'll be some sides of some very ugly buildings which have either uh, been defaced in the past and they have no, no option other than to paint them and then face the prospect of being graffitied again. So that's one that you could put a clear base on and then start with some graffiti. Police and youth workers will offer graffiti artists the opportunity to take part. Some rock platforms, headlands and beaches may soon be declared protected areas where fishermen are banned from taking crabs and pippies. They're areas that have become under increasing pressure in recent years, particularly uh, areas close to uh, the metropolitan regions. Local committees from Gosford to Port Stephens will be formed to determine which areas should be protected and the management strategies required to try and preserve the integrity of some of those areas, the department's seen it necessary to, to introduce these management uh, objectives. The aim of the protected areas is to provide a sanctuary for marine life so they can breed and depleted areas will be restocked. Jane Anderson, NBN News.
The Breakers Club has been invited back for another season of the National Soccer League, providing it can prove it has the cash to stay in the competition. And that's no certainty for a club struggling under a $2.5 million debt. The club has no major sponsor and has a severe cash flow problem. Club members will meet on June 19 to vote on three options. One is to refinance. The second involves selling the asset that incurred the debt in the first place, the Mitre 10 Stadium. But this seems an attractive alternative compared with the last option. The other proposal which uh, no one really wants to talk about is uh, that uh, we wind the company up. Despite the dire financial troubles, the club is confident it will field a side next season. It's already signed half of this year's team, has talked to a number of former internationals and has attracted offers from the biggest coaching names in the country. The club says if it can get a winning side on the paddock, the fans will follow and many of the money problems should take care of themselves. Certainly, uh, if you've got a winning team, you usually uh, the support does, uh, does come along to see a winning team and we'll get behind it. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. The seven Hunter Region batching plants of concrete supplier Coastal Redimix have been sold to either CSR or Pioneer and a gravel production plant operated by Quizrock Quarries near Bulladila has closed. Receiver, Sydney-based Deloitte Tushin Tomatsu, would not confirm that 13 people have been retrenched as a result of the changes. The companies were placed in receivership at the request of the ANZ Bank last March, with debts reported at $27 million. Paul Stillman's job is to clean up where the vandals have left off. The general public are fed up to their high teeth with this sort of thing going on. Graffiti has become such a serious problem that Newcastle Council has set up a special policy to fight it. Yesterday, General Manager Bill Grant announced Council will allocate buildings and billboards, especially for the graffitiists. Paul Stillman can't believe it. Well, I think that's just giving in. Paul believes the way to go is to paint the buildings with a special anti-graffiti paint, like on this wall in Gosford. The vandals can paint what they like and it just wipes off. The product has been around for years, it's double the cost of ordinary paint, but Paul believes it works out cheaper than repainting after a vandalism attack. Newcastle Council says it is treating some buildings with the anti-graffiti paint, but that depends on available funding. Peter Ryan, NBN News. Since 1968, Brian Cecil has climbed these steps to the top of Nobby's signal station. From the 360-degree view of Newcastle Harbour and beyond, he's helped coordinate the movement of ships, first as assistant signal master, then as the boss. We are responsible uh, to coordinate the shipping movements uh, through the port uh, to make sure that the ships enter on time and uh, and uh, for the safety of uh, shipping in general. It's a responsibility he's taken seriously. If there is an accident or, or uh, through any fault of ours, it would be a major blow to the port of Newcastle. He says the week after the earthquake was the busiest with all port operations controlled from Nobbies. Tomorrow, Brian will hand over the telescope to Newcastle's new signal master, Les Stevens. Brian is just one of about 400 people to leave the Hunter Ports Authority since rationalisation began in 1989. As the role of the authority changed, the workforce was cut from 510 people to 130. Jane Anderson, NBN News.
Three years ago, Mary Carl knew little about computers. I knew what one looked like, and that was about it. I had never even touched one. But that all changed when the former nurse began a TAFE course to gain an associate diploma in business. It's given me a whole new career, um, the best one I've had, the third one I've had, but a new career and really good job prospects. Hours of study were awarded at a special ceremony last night. Mary received three outstanding achievement awards, including the highest honour, the Hunter Institute of Technology's best overall student. It felt absolutely wonderful. It was, it was great, but I'm still doing hard work. I did a final exam that morning and then came down for the awards. Now studying at Sydney's University of Technology, Mary is working with a computer software company, developing procedures and writing easy to understand manuals. And I want to go on and study up the design side of things in designing systems and bringing quality into the industry. According to the Education Department, volunteer tutors play a vital role in helping students with special reading needs. There are students who have for some reason been, um, they may have had hearing difficulties, they may have had vision difficulties, they may have just missed out for some reason and slipped through the net, so we're picking them up. It's estimated one in five Year 7 students have reading difficulties, some still experience problems in senior years. They get one-to-one -one, um, help um, on, on a really a regular basis so that um, 50 or 60 students can get one-to-one -one help yeah, once a week, which one teacher can't do. We're finding that on average in Year 7, the students improve during six months of the scheme by about 15 months. And this is, these are students with reading difficulty. Those taking part in the program networked at City Hall today Backed by the Education Department, a special resource booklet for support teachers was launched. For most volunteer tutors, it's a case of the more they give, the more they receive in return. Seeing the kids um, respond and, and you know that, that they do improve um, and, and the feeling you get recognising their uh, progress is, is worthwhile. He may have written his greatest works during the 16th century, but Shakespeare is still popular with young fans today. Um, we're doing Macbeth and it's all about like human tragedy and stuff and it's good because like it's like society today, everybody has their own tragedies and it's sort of, it's relevant, it's nearly the same but in a different time. It's really interesting because it's like learning like another language sort of like French or German or something, you're learning Shakespeare and it's really worthwhile. Newcastle Repertory Theatre played host to the regional finals of this year's Shakespeare Festival. Thespians from nine high schools perform scenes from the classics, including famous duo logs. This excerpt from Antony and Cleopatra. And judges were looking for more than just dramatic delivery. They have to explain to the judges in an interview how they've got to uh, where they're at with their performance. So they, they need to have a logbook of all the processes they've been through to get it to that stage. Meriwether High was judged the overall winner and will go on to compete in the state finals in Sydney. If the cast is successful, it might just take out the national title and travel to London's Globe Theatre.
Confidence in the Falcons' camp is high following last Friday's victory over South East Melbourne Magic. Before that game, players were given the day off. So wanting to keep a winning formula, be it superstitious, assistant Falcons coach Dave Ankeny says only an optional training session was staged today. The Falcons have won their last three clashes with the Sydney Kings. Saturday night will be their first encounter this season. Sydney's form has improved this year. They're now placed fourth on the ladder. The Falcons are tenth. But Dave Ankeny believes his team has the game to beat the Kings. We play best when we play uh, good, strong defence and uh, and really I think we'd have to look at containing their two uh, imports, Trimingham and Donaldson, who are very good players and are doing a lot of their scoring. Adding depth to the Falcons lineup, a backup centre Paul Simpson is returning tomorrow night after four weeks off with a broken finger. Yeah, having Paul back in the team is a big bonus for us, especially against the big team, because uh, Paul can get in there for a few minutes and he really likes to uh, push and shove and uh, make some contact, and that really helps us during the game. Catherine Lamond, NBN News. Ever-increasing interest and the using up of most available land led Tari Council to have a serious look at what direction it wanted the future of the area to take. A priority was to retain the village qualities of Old Bar and Wallaby Point and ensure they remain separate. The plan provides for immediate land releases in uh, Wallaby Point as a minor expansion to the west. Um, it allows for resolution of the village boundaries and additional residential development at the southern end of Lewis Street and for immediate expansion of the village in a westerly direction. Mr Gardner stressed the plan must provide a pleasant townscape and adequate residential land for future needs while protecting the natural coastal environment. It was important from Council's point of view to uh, examine the area to, to see what development options were available and to come up this, with this plan now to provide for that future growth. The study will be launched publicly at the Old Bar Soldiers Memorial Hall on the 28th of this month and remain on display for six weeks. The Northern Star Cafe in Newcastle's food mecca of Hamilton is one of the lucky ones. It's a thriving business. It's successful. Uh, we're very happy with the way things are. However, a recent survey by Ernst & Young shows the hunter is expected to have a record number of people and businesses going bankrupt. During the first three quarters of this financial year, 290 people were declared bankrupt, the highest incidence recorded in the Newcastle suburbs of Mayfield, Windale and Cardiff. The incidence of bankruptcy, that is the number of people that become bankrupt, is linked in some way to levels of unemployment or increases in the level of unemployment. Nick Driver from Ernst & Young says those who are bankrupt are mainly individuals who, once unemployed, can't pay their debts. Help, though, is available. Organisations like the Salvation Army offer counselling and practical assistance. In lots of cases, their, their, their homes are gone, or if they're not gone, well, they've got to certainly reorganise themselves, get into different accommodation. People facing bankruptcy are advised to seek financial counselling early and to talk to their creditors. Jane Anderson, NBN News.
It's called the Purple Postcard Campaign. 10,000 leaflets will be distributed to women in the Port Stephens area, asking them what they believe the federal government should be doing for women. Women uh, do not uh, have equal representation in the decision-making process, either at local government, state or federal government. So most of the decisions that are made for women are made for them by men. There was no shortage of ideas from those at today's launch. High on the list, better childcare. Probably in their own home, I look after my grandchildren uh, uh, at various times. Bob Horn says the information will be collated and presented to Dr Carmen Lawrence, the minister assisting the Prime Minister on the status of women. Dr Lawrence will be visiting the area later this year.